Hi everybody, thanks for joining me in my kitchen tonight while I make dinner. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Hannah and I work with Pampered Chef. Um, and my goal with this video is to show you how um, electric pressure cooking does not have to be intimidating and it does not have to be um, hard to do. So this is a quick cooker, it's Pampered Chef's version of an electric pressure cooker. It has 16 settings that are pre-programmed but then also it has a custom setting, so that's really nice. Um, so tonight I'm making pork carnitas and I'm going to um, use the sear setting as well as the beef and pork setting um, for the quick cooker. So the temperatures are already set and the times are already set, but you can customize that as well. So um, this is the lid. What I love about this, especially with my kids, is that everything is cool to touch. So there's absolutely no danger here with the kids unless they were to open it. The other thing I like is that the release valve is clear back here in a way. So that is really helpful also when you're steaming. I've had electric pressure cookers in the past where my hand is up right where that release valve is and it was super dangerous and I'm glad this one's far away. So that's there. So for my carnitas, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need to put a little bit of olive oil in here. That's what I choose anyway. Um, but I'm going to use a tablespoon of olive oil and get that nice and hot while I'm telling you about what I'm doing. All right, so we're going to set it to the sears. And we're gonna just, I'm gonna push start, but we're just gonna let it sear for about three minutes while I'm talking to you here. Okay, so I've gone ahead and for the carnitas, I've sliced up a pork tenderloin, um, but you can, uh, they're about one inch thick, but you can also use like a pork shoulder. You probably get a little more flavor that way, but I went ahead and just used what I had. Um, so with this, I'm going to, I've got them already cleaned up and I'm going to use one tablespoon of chili powder. I'm gonna use um, two teaspoons of salt and one teaspoon of cumin. So I'm gonna go ahead and just season these guys. Grant will laugh at this because he likes that salt bay guy. All right, so there's quite a bit here. Just gonna season them up. This will give a nice crust on one portion. Okay. So one thing I found that when you use the sear setting before you use the pressure cooker setting, that it actually takes a lot less time to get your pressure cooker up to the correct amount of pressure. And so that is very helpful, even when you aren't using the sear section, setting, but if you just turn it on, then that can help move things along as well. All right, so we're gonna make sure it's nice and hot. You can pull that out. So this is a six quart capacity and it's a stainless steel bowl. There's a lot of other accessories you can get there as well, but I can feel that heat coming in. So the other ingredients I'm gonna use with my pork, I'm gonna use a large red bell pepper. I'm gonna use a large onion and I'm gonna use about four cloves of garlic and then some lime juice as well. And that's it. So it's very simple to do and it's all gonna cook right here in there with that. Okay, so I'm being impatient, but I wanna put my pork in. <laughs> but I want it to be, to sear. All right, so we're gonna throw that. Oh yeah, it's good. So I have about five chops here. I may need to move them around a little bit. Okay. So I'm gonna steer those for about three to five minutes. And while I'm doing that, oh, I spilled some olive oil earlier and did not realize it was under my cutting board. Okay, so another mat here, and I'm gonna start by showing you my favorite way to cut a pepper okay so this is a scoop loop and this is the pepper this can be used for pumpkins avocados all kinds of stuff but i love it for my peppers so here we go we're going to just take one end they have a serrated section here 
And I like to save as much pepper as possible so when I go in like that, you can see how it goes there. I have found that if you clean it out, so I'm gonna go all the way around and then I'll show you. Let's pull that out. So I found that if I, if I clean it out before I slice it, it makes things a lot easier as well. Um, and this is where the challenge comes in, actually showing you how this is done. So you pull from internally there with those serrated sections. And just because you can't see very well, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half and show you. But normally I leave it whole. All right. Hi guys, thanks for coming in. And if you watch this on replay, make sure to say hi to me then as well. Okay, so you can see how that cleans it up so quickly and easily and I can get rid of some of this extra garbage. Okay, and just pull down on that. There we go. Okay, I smell them in there. All right, so get rid of all those. And this is just a paring knife. Peppers and onions are like our go-to at our house. We love them with sausage, <laughs> with red sauce. Okay, so yeah, it's been about four minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut the sear mode off. And then, oh, let me the other side. Okay. And then I'm gonna show you what we're adding here to it. So, if you cannot hear my voice, let me know. Tell me to speak up, okay? Because I've got this cooking here with me. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in the peppers. And I actually did my garlic because it takes a while, but you just press the garlic. So here's the deal. Fresh is always best. And you guys know this, but sometimes we get lazy. But fresh is where the flavor is at. So if you can press your garlic, um, that makes a huge difference. If you can use ingredients that are not, they don't have preservatives in them, then you're gonna have a lot better flavor with that. So this is four cloves of garlic. And then I'm going to slice up a large onion. So this is my quick slice and it has, it's like a mandolin and it's got a blade here. It rests right on my quick cooker. And then I wanna show you this. It has a little holder here, which is the secret because this guy is super sharp and you do not want your fingers there. So I pull that up, place it into my onion. And I love spirals. So once I get these sliced in, they're gonna slice directly in there, but once I get it going, see how it just continues to go down. I need like a double view so you guys can see my onion going in as well, but I'll show you in a minute. So again, everything's done in this one pot. Okay. And once I get the lime juice in, I'll show you what it looks like in there. So this is a citrus press, another way to make my life a little bit easier. I've halved my lime. Put it in upside down like this, and then squeeze. So that's gonna just be directly into the pot. Well, whoops, he's on the floor. Same thing here. Okay. So I'm gonna kinda tilt forward here. So you can see how everything's all cooking, and there are my slices. So really nice slices and I'll show you those too. So I like how uniform they are and then when I go to break them up. So I'm gonna use here, just kind of stir everything together. Whoops, I lost one. Okay, so this is really it guys. So I have all the ingredients in there. I've got my pork on the bottom, I've got my onions. My onions are making my eyes water. So I'm sorry if you see me crying. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna take my quick cooker lid. I make sure that my valve is flat so that does not release the pressure. And then there's actually a little red 
guy right here that's going to tell me when I'm up to pressure. So I'm gonna use this knob here and bring it over to the beef and pork setting. Now it's actually set for 35 minutes, but with this, the way we have it cut up, we only need to run it for um, about eight. So I'm gonna adjust the time. So there's a, a custom time place here. We're gonna bring that down to eight minutes. Okay, and then we hit start. So with our quick cooker, you can see it building pressure and it's gonna use do this little, I don't know if you can tell, the more I move it, then it doesn't work as well. Okay, so anyway, it just, once it gets going, then once it's up to pressure, this little red indicator will pop up and then also it, the timer will start. So it'll be a countdown then, um, when eight minutes is over, then it stays warm and it will naturally release the pressure itself. So a lot of people like to naturally release for about 10 minutes um, and that makes it safer as well when they come over. Okay, so I've got everything in. I'm gonna let it run for the eight minutes once it comes to pressure, but I just wanna show you how they don't have to be intimidating. Once I get the pork out, once everything is cooked, I'm gonna pull it out. Um, I'll either use my salad choppers or I'll probably use the quick shreds. Um, this is a great way to pull apart the pork. Um, you can use these for beef roast also, chicken even. Um, pull it apart and it can lay in your taco batter. We'll put it all together. I know my husband is going to be loading it with sour cream and you can put any of your favorite toppings on there that you usually do. So thank you. I hope that this has helped with some of the confusion with an electric pressure cooker and you may be more comfortable to use one in your own kitchen. So enjoy your dinner guys. Bye.